here I'm going to show you a couple of things very quickly. First is autofill, the autofill options, and second is using absolute cell referencing. Autofill, I think you know this already, but just in case you don't, autofill will automatically fill a range that you select. So for example, this is a little spreadsheet in Excel that's going to help me calculate how much money each grade has made selling ice creams. So let's say it's been a hot summer, which it is now, and every grade has been selling ice cream to see who can, who can raise the most money. So I've put in grade eight over there. Now, if I take my mouse and I click on the drag handle and I drag this down just normally, that duplicates what's in the cell. So that's not gonna help me very much because it's still literally just duplicating the number eight. So what I'm gonna do is instead of using my normal left mouse button, I'm gonna use the right mouse button. I'm gonna click and drag down with the right mouse button. Now don't worry that it still says eight. Don't stress about that. Let go of the mouse button and there you can see it says fill series, full series, a series of numbers. I click full series, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 is now done. So now let's have a look at the number of ice creams sold. I'm just going to do some random numbers. Let's say they sold 56, they sold 73, the grade 10s sold 80 ice creams, the grade 11s went nuts and sold 128, and the grade 12s were too busy studying so they only sold 4. Now I'm going to work out how much money did they make? I've put up in the top left here in cell A1 the amount of 10 Rand. 10 Rand per ice cream. So normally to work this out it's just of basic equals the number of ice creams sold times the 10 Rand. So D2 times A1. I press enter and my first figure is correct. However, if I'm going to drag this down now to copy that formula automatically down to the rest, you will notice it doesn't look so good. There's something wrong here. That is because the A1 has gone and become A2. And in the next cell, it is now A3. Do you see if I double click on this? That's where it is. So it, the reference keeps changing because it's relative. So we need to make sure that we are only going to reference A1 all the time. I'll show you two ways of doing this. The first way is when you choose cell A1, there it is over there, in fact I'll just take that away, so let's say I've clicked A1, press the F4 key, the function 4 key on your keyboard. That puts a dollar symbol in front of the A and in front of the 1. That means dollar A, dollar 1, it will always stay A1. Even if you drag that down, it's not going to change. So let's have a look and see what that does now. First cell, great, D2. Now I'm going to drag this down now to the next four. And now that looks a lot better. Let's look at our functions, sorry, our formulas. D3 times A1, D4 times A1, D5 times A1, and D6. Now that's also great, but what happens if A1 moved or was changed or something happened to it? Or Let's think of a an easier way, instead of having the dollar symbols and the cell reference, let's try this instead. Take that away. And what I'm going to do is this cell A1, I click on cell A1, I can actually give cell A1 a name. I'm going to give it a name. And I'm going to call it um, cost, uh, what am I going to call it? <laughs> price. I'll call it price. That's the price per ice cream. I press enter, and as you can see now, this cell is now called price. I'll click out of there's A2 back there, price. Now, it doesn't matter where I put this cell now. That cell is always going to be called price. So if I move it somewhere else, it's still going to be called price. And this is the beauty of this. Watch this. Equals the number of ice creams sold, D2 times. I can either click on A1 like I did the last time. I can even type in the word price. And there it is there. That's it. Times price. How's this? Now watch this. I'll just drag that down. And because I'm referencing the, the price, the cell called price, it's the same thing as absolute cell referencing. And that's the difference between relative and absolute cell referencing. I would always recommend using the cell name. So you give the cell a name. And remember, you can do the same thing with a range of cells. So I can select this whole range and I can call that grade. 
So if I ever, if I'm just clicking here, you can see it's the individual ones pointing with my hand. I mean the mouse there. And if I select them all, that is the grade range. Okay, so when you talk about absolute cell referencing or referencing a cell all the time, that it doesn't change, think about giving it a name first. The autofill, just to recap so you don't forget, autofill, using the right mouse button, click, drag down to where you want to stop, let go and say fill series and it does the rest for you.